guys, welcome to another Bookmas video and one where I get to talk about Agatha Christie. So she is definitely one of my favorite authors, but I feel like some of her books are a little better than others. So today I'm going to be talking about my six favorite from her and my six least favorite. So I'm actually fairly new-ish to Agatha Christie considering, you know, when she started writing books. I think that I'm coming up on maybe like five or six years of reading her books and I specifically try to not read too many of her books in a row because that's just generally how I read anyway. I like to go from like one genre to a different genre. Um, also I, would, I don't want to mix up all the mysteries in my brain. I don't have the best brain ever. Like I, I'm not good at remembering things. So if I read too many books that are fairly similar in a row it all starts to blend together. So this last year I've been trying to read one a month. A few months I've read more than one, but yeah, let's get into it. Let's let's start with the worst ones so that we can end on a good note. Um, I don't know if these are in any particular order. Yes, the last one here, let's, let's make this number one. I gave it two stars and then I think the rest of these were three stars. So the absolute worst one that I've read is Passenger to Frankfurt. Now, part of that is I didn't know going into it, this is supposed to be a political thriller, I think. So very different. Like I'm going, I thought I was going in for an Agatha Christie typical whodunit mystery. It's not that. But once you say the word political, that's not really my kind of thing either. And it's a thriller as in like, when was this written? Like a thriller back in the day, not like we think of thrillers these days. 1970. Um, yeah, so, but that all being said, this still to this day has one of the best first chapters that I have ever read and it's my least favorite Agatha Christie. So that's sad. Uh, the first chapter starts out at an airport I think and the this woman oh man now it's all messed up in my brain um, this woman goes up to this other lady and, and is like hey what if we trade places and that's what they do and so I thought this book was going to be amazing, but then it just went downhill from there. So definitely keeping it on my shelves. I've got a big Agatha Christie collection, um, but I don't see myself ever rereading this or recommending it to anybody. Okay, then I think the rest are three stars. Um, I've heard that this one is Agatha Christie's least favorite that she wrote herself, and that is The Mystery of the Blue Train. I just remember being very confused. I felt like the, the writing in this one just was not up to par with her normal ones. I don't know what the year is on this one. 1928. Okay, so it's like one of her earlier ones. She started writing in 1922 or publishing them in 1922. This is a Poirot book. It's on the back here. It says a man with a mask, rubies too fabulous to wear, an unhappy couple each having an affair, and a case of murder for Hercule Poirot. So yeah, I don't really have much to say about this one because I just really didn't enjoy my reading experience and was just disappointed in this one. This next one, once again, is not actually a traditional whodunit mystery and I think had I known that going into it I would have rated it higher. So I gave it three stars. This one is Endless Night. This one is more the like eerie gothic horror genre and if I would have known that I think I would have read it with a different mindset and given it a higher rating. I wish there would be like a disclaimer that way. So this is actually one of Agatha Christie's favorites because this uh, edition that I have has a list of her favorites, which I'm just curious now. One, two, three, four, four of my favorites. Four of my six favorites are her favorites. I like it, liked it more once I was done and realized what kind of book it was than when I was reading it, but it's currently on my list of least favorites. If I ever reread it, it might actually get bumped up. Next up, we've got Five Little Pigs. This one I remember reading on a trip I was taking. And I think I didn't like this one because it has to do with a mystery that took place like 20 years before and we're just solving it. And sometimes with her mysteries that does happen, that there's like a mystery that took place before, but then usually there's also like a current mystery. And this one just felt quite dry because there wasn't really a whole lot going on in the current time period, in my opinion. So that's another reason this one is earning a spot near the bottom. When I was looking through my list to see which ones 
were the bottom. I was actually very surprised that this one made it. I don't know if I agree with this, but that was what my current... Well, I star rating when I finished reading it. That's what I gave it, a three star. This is The Murder at the Vicarage. This is a Miss Marple mystery. I read this on like one of the first months that I was doing Patreon. So I have a reading vlog I was doing every week, I think I was, or every few chapters, I was putting out a new reading vlog. And thinking back to like my thought process in this book, it's very interesting. Um, and, and I can't remember why I gave it three stars only, other than one of the main characters, her name is Lettuce, and that was, that just drove me nuts because who does that to their child? Uh, but that's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the actual book. Um, but yeah, I can remember how this one ends, and I don't know why I gave it such a low star rating. The next one is one I read recently. It is in my favorite Agatha Christie, one of my favorite Agatha Christie series, but none of those books, I don't think, none of those books from one of my favorite series made my top books, <laughs> and one of them made the bottom. This one is Postern of Fate. So this is, I think, the last book in the Tommy and Tuppence series. Um, I just finished the series and I can't even remember if this was the last one or if there was another one. I love Tommy and Tuppence as detectives, as a couple, but the writing in this one, yes, this was the last one because it just felt a little disjointed and somebody commented on my wrap-up of this one that Agatha Christie was maybe showing signs of dementia later in life and this is one of her later books, so I wonder if that place into it a bit or at this point did editors not feel like they could critique her work and change anything? I don't know but unfortunately even though I love Tommy and Tuppence I didn't enjoy the, the writing of this book and it really pulled me out of the story. Okay now on to my favorites. Um, I did I think videos for two of these so at the end of last year beginning of this year I filmed myself trying to solve, I think, six different Agatha Christie's, possibly more, seven or eight, I think, actually. Um, and then I got a little burnt out, even though it was so much fun. It was exhausting to analyze every Agatha Christie I read. I realized I sometimes just want to read them, and some of them are not traditional whodunits, so you're trying to solve something that can't really be solved. Uh, but this is a good stack. So the first one is actually a, a compilation of short stories. This is Midwinter Murder. I just talked about this one in my live Christmas book recommendations. This isn't like like a Christmas book. It's it's more winter, but where I live, winter starts in November, so it has Christmas vibes to me. I think some of these were like set around New Year's and stuff. Um, just a collection of her short stories, and it made me fall in love with like a bunch of her characters. And I like short stories. I like that an author can take. A story and condense it and make me care about characters and plot in such a short time. So I enjoyed this one a lot. When asked about my favorite Agatha Christie, this is the book that always, that I always say. I mean, I have lots of favorites, but this is, I think this is like the ultimate favorite. That is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. I read this one with my classics book club that I hosted a few years ago, and I just loved it. I just, I just loved it. Um, what can I say about this one? So, on the back here, it's actually really good. It says, Poor Roger Ackroyd. He knew that the woman he loved had been harboring a guilty secret. She poisoned her first husband, and yesterday she killed herself. But guilty secrets rarely stay secret. Who had been blackmailing her before her death? Had it really driven to her to suicide? To suicide? Sadly, Roger Ackroyd wasn't going to live long enough to find out. So, obviously, Roger dies and there's a mystery, and I don't know, it's one of those, I wasn't trying to solve it, I was just having fun reading it, and then Agatha Christie like threw out the guilty person, and I was like, what? Didn't see that coming, so loved it for that. Next up, we've got The Moving Finger. This is also one of my favorites of hers, I think because this was my first Miss Marple that I read, even though she's, she's not in her books a ton, and she's not in this one very much, this is one of her favorites. The Murder of Roger Ackroyd and The Moving Finger are both on her list of favorites. Uh, this one has to do with notes that people are receiving in this village, and there's murders happening, and things are just not adding up. And yeah, 
I liked this one. I reread this one back in March. Angie and I were hosting a like Agatha Christie reading weekend and I read this one again. So last year, last November, was the first time that I tried to solve an Agatha Christie and share my thought process and it was Peril at End House and I do think the experience of sharing my thoughts made this book even more fun but this is another one where I was I was going along and I was actually trying to solve this mystery and I was shocked at the ending and I loved it. So in this one um, like our detective is Hercule Perrault but our main non-detective character her name is Miss Buckley. I don't remember what her first name was. She has had a few near-death accidents in the last few days so she sees Poirot while he's at uh, I think he's at a hotel or something and tries to get him to help her and yeah I I had so much fun with this one. Another one of the first Agatha Christie's I ever read was and then there were none because this is one of her most popular ones and this is one where people are getting picked off one by one so you know there's, uh, they were all invited to uh, an isolated island mansion. So you know your cast of characters. And they're all getting picked off one by one. And I kept thinking, yeah, like it's this person. And then that person would die. And it's like, okay, it's this person. And then that person would die. And I was surprised by the end, even though there was like no one else less left to guess. So I would have read this at the beginning of my Agatha Christie reading career. And it's one I really want to reread. Then the last one on the list is not really the last for any particular reason, although I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It is 450 from Paddington. This one is a Miss Marple and I have a video sharing my thoughts on this one as well. Uh, this one, was, it starts out with the first chapter. An old lady is going to visit a friend and when she's on the train she sees a murder occur on another train so like her train's going and another train comes and then pulls ahead but when it's like right about there she sees a murder happen and she gets Miss Marple involved in trying to solve it even though there's no body uh, yeah thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it so I would love to hear some of your favorite and least favorite Agatha Christie if you've never read any of hers I would suggest starting with one of my favorites. Um, I have not been reading the Miss Marple and Poirot or books in order. Tommy and Tuppence, I would say you should because they grow older as the books go and it's, it's fun to see their relationship grow. But yeah, I still have tons more of her books to read and I'm just going to keep slowly plugging away with it and having a lot of fun with her books. I do think I will try to do another uh, attempt at solving one of her mysteries soon. It's been a while since I did my last one. I have a whole playlist of all the ones I tried to solve that I can leave leave linked below and then I had extended editions of me trying to solve it over on Patreon with like more thoughts and things. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun. So I think I'm gonna do that again soon because I enjoy it and I know I have one book for sure left to read that is a traditional whodunit from what I've been told so I should be able to solve it uh, or you know should 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 be able to solve it will I? My success rate is not very high I am definitely not going to be a detective anytime soon but I still enjoy reading mysteries so yes let me know your favorite and least favorite Agatha Christie books and I will see you guys again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.